about to receive prepared our hearts. Father, we want to say thank you for your faithfulness, for your mercies, for everything, Lord Father, that you do in our lives, which is beyond our understanding. But we know, Father, whatever you do is good for us. And as we lean on you, Father, we trust you in all our ways and we ask you to, Father, lead us by your word today. We ask you to bless and anoint Brother Rahul once again. When he shares the word, when he breaks the bread, Father, we are able to receive the bread in its fullness. Glorify you through our lives. And Father, whatever we receive, we may apply it in our lives, be able to live by it so that we may glorify you. We surrender this entire meeting. We surrender Brother Frankie as he worships and leads us in worship to prepare our hearts to receive the word. We bless Brother Rahul as he shares the word. And we bless all the members who are here part of this group to receive your bread father lord as we hunger and thirst talk to us through the word let your word enrich us and uh, and help us uh, lord father live a victorious life on this earth as we are part of the more than conquerors group we may truly live like more than conquerors we once again thank you for this provision for this small church that you have given us that we may be completely surrendered to the power of the holy spirit lead us by the power of your holy spirit and Help us to glorify you in every way. Whatever we do, we may glorify you. Once again, thank you. Help help us and guide us. In Jesus' name, we ask and we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. You'll be lifted up in and through our lives. Thank you, Jesus. You'll be lifted up through our ministries. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless heaven declares your righteousness, Lord. Help us, Lord, to declare, Lord, into our praises of God and the praises of so forth from the innermost beings of our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. All heaven declares your heaven declares the glory of the risen Lord. Who can compare? Who can compare? Who can compare with the beauty of the Lord, your beauty? All heaven declare, heaven declare the glory of the risen Lord. Who can compare? Who can compare? Who can compare? With the beauty of the Lord, wherever, wherever you will be, wherever, oh, I'm upon the throne, I'm upon the throne, I gladly bow my knee, I bow and worship you for me, forever and ever. Forever you will be, forever, though I'm upon the throne, I'm upon the throne, I'm glad to be my name, I bow down, and worship you, Lord, I worship, I will proclaim, I will proclaim. The glory of the reason of who once was slain, who once was slain, who once was slain, to reconcile men to God. I will, I will proclaim, I will proclaim the glory of the reason of who once was slain. Who once was slain, who once was slain, who reconciled me to God. Wherever you will be, wherever the lamb upon the throne, the lamb upon the throne, I gladly bow my knee. I bow down and worship you, Lord, forever and ever, forever you will be, forever, the lamb upon the throne, the 
never gonna throw. I gladly bow my knees. I bow down and worship you. All heaven declares, all heaven declares the glory of the Creator. Who can, who can compare? Who can compare? With the beauty of the Lord, all heaven, all heaven declare, all heaven declare the glory of the Redeemer. Who can compare? Who can compare? Who can compare with the beauty of the Lord? Forever you will be. Will I am upon the throne. I gladly bow my knee and worship you alone. Forever you will be. Oh, I'm upon the throne. I gladly bow my knees and worship you. I will, I will, I will proclaim, I will proclaim the glory of the King. Who wants to say? What's your strength to reconcile me to God? Yes, I will, I will proclaim, I will proclaim the glory of the beast of God. Who's slain? Who wants your strength? What's your strength to reconcile me? Forever and ever, forever you will be. Forever, the lamb upon the throne, the lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow my knee, I bow down and worship you. Forever and ever, forever, forever you will be. Forever.
Time, Lord, we prepare our hearts for your word, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Fill us, Lord, with your presence. Fill us, Lord, with your words. The words that give us life, O oh God. Come forth into our lives at this time, Lord. A good ground, we pray, Lord. Every heart will be a good ground. Our lives will be a good ground at this time. In Yeshua's name, we pray, Lord. In Yeshua's name. Everybody says, Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Your will, Lord. Hallelujah. Take over this meeting. Take over the atmosphere from wherever people are joining in, Lord. Lord, take over the hearts and minds of people, I pray. Hallelujah. I declare your mighty work in the lives of your people. I declare your mighty word in the, li in the lives of your people. Let your power, Lord, hallelujah, deliver your people, Lord. Revive your people. Revive us, Holy Spirit, I pray, by the power of your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, O Zekabo Seti Ramana Tayara Bandu, Resi Altara Balahalsi. At this time, we give into your hands, Lord. Take charge, take control, Holy Spirit, <coughs> of this further time, even as we hear from you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so <coughs> last time, I think um, a week back, we saw about discerning God's times and season. Uh, from uh, So we were looking at the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 where the Bible says that there is a time for everything and a, and a season for every purpose under heaven. And we saw a, a lot of things related to times and season. Okay, so I the Lord asked me to continue on the times and season and uh, continue on that topic because it's very huge. So we will continue on... Uh, understanding or discerning the times and seasons okay so let's go to first chronicles chapter 12 first chronicles chapter 12 verse number 32 first chronicles 12 32 of the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do their chiefs were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. Okay, so when you read uh, First Chronicles chapter twelve, the First Chronicles chapter twelve mentions about the departments in the army of David, or in the administration work, administrative work, and the army of David. Okay, the kingdom uh, was given completely to David, the kingdom of Israel. So the whole. A kingdom of Israel was under David now 
and when you read first chronicles chapter 2 chapter 2 that chapter specifically mentions about who is doing what mostly people were appointed for war the tribes uh, several uh, tribes like the tribe of uh, you know judah the tribe of uh, simeon, simeon the tribe of levi those tribes were uh, appointed they 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 had warriors in them who used to fight the battle for david but verse 32 mentions about the sons of Issachar who were not warriors but who what they were doing is they kept a understanding of the times okay they had a knowledge they had an understanding of times and seasons and they used to instruct or direct of what Israel has to do as per what time and season what they ought to do so this sons of Issachar this department or, or this group brought direction for the army of David it brought direction to the army of David because the army of God or the church can never function without the prophetic direction they can never function without a prophetic ministry okay I have covered many aspects of the prophetic ministry and I have concentrated and emphasized a lot about the dimension of the intercession watchman ministry in the prophetic but uh, today we are going to look at the at the direction and the eyes of the prophetic which gives direction to the army of god okay which gives direction to the ch church of god so the prophetic in this department the people who are there they keep a understanding of what type of season is going on okay so the sons of Issachar, what they used to do they were in the prophetic department of the army of david without which the army cannot function if they don't have direction what to do they cannot do you know as per david needs needs the prophetic function uh, david needs the understanding of the times and season and he used to receive that gift he used to receive that benefit from the sons of Issachar. okay they used to discern the times and season and used to direct and command the army on what to do okay so the first point that we want to look at is discerning times and season before doing or starting something or taking a decision is very important discerning the time and season before doing or starting something or taking a decision important decision is very required is very important hallelujah everything especially in regards i'm not only talking about the kingdom of god or about the church even about your personal decisions about your family decisions you have to discern there should be a discernment uh, discernment unction on you anointing on you personally for your personal life might be you are not operating in the prophetic office but the holy spirit will give you the discernment to discern what to do and what not to do why we it's very important to discern the time and season before taking a dis, decision if we don't discern the time and season and as per the season take the decision we will we will waste our time we will we ourselves will create many delays in our life for example you cannot uh, you cannot go to russia and uh, say that i want to start a mango business in russia you cannot do that in russia because the climatic the climate condition in russia is not favorable for the growing growing of mango trees you cannot do a mango business going in russia hallelujah when you are in russia you have to start something else as per the climate condition as per the territory you are living in or you have you are residing in you have to if you if you if you do a mango business that, that that is not going to work you cannot start harvesting until the crops crops are ripe okay the crops have to be ripe and only after that you can stop start the reaping process the harvesting process because when the crops become ripe then the season of harvesting starts so till the time the crops are not ripe you cannot go and start cutting the crops till the times that it, it is not ripe you have to still continue to fertilize it and water it so that it can grow towards ripeness so there is an understanding of and discernment of what season you are in hallelujah if you jump if you don't discern that the crops are not ripe and it's still time to fertilize and water the crops you can 
you can start harvesting and you will get a bunch of premature crops premature fruits that are good for nothing it will destroy you it will destroy the work the labor that you did of sowing and you know let it let it get ripen and harvest that labor that days that you that you put the energy that you have put on that very work it will go for waste if you don't have the discernment of times and season if you don't have the eyes of the prophetic hallelujah so until the crops are ripe okay so after the after the crops are ripe Th there is the other extreme after the crops become ripe for harvesting people don't understand that they have to harvest the crops and they are still fertilizing and watering the crops let's go to a verse in bible in the bible in matthew's chapter 9 verse 37 <clears throat> Matthews chapter 9 verse 37 then he said to his disciples what the harvest truly is plentiful but the laborers are few huh? the harvest tr truly is plentiful but why there are no laborers because the laborers have not recognized that the crops have have become ready to harvest to be harvested hallelujah when you are leading a fellowship when a pastor is leading a church he should quickly recognize when the season of a church member has opened up and the time he has to release that church member yeah the pastors are not understanding they don't have a discernment of times and season church members will not sit you guys will not sit if you are walking with god for all the time you have your seasons will change and the the prophetic discernment a prophet has to discern when the season of this person has ripened and when it's time time for him to leave the field and go out and do his assignment okay are we understanding the discernment of times and season jesus is saying here the harvest is plentiful the laborers but the laborers are few there is no one to work on the harvest because why people are still stuck in watering and feeding people you know comforting each other no your problems will go no your money will come but the harvest outside is plentiful it's a season jesus is saying that the cro crops are, are ripe but there is no one to work on those crops to uh, to harvest it to 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 reap it hmm? hallelujah there is a season where you sow there is a season where you reap we saw that in the last sermon ecclesiastes chapter 3 so i have covered all those things but we are into the into the sons of isaka today the eyes of the prophetic okay and the direction of the prophetic so jesus said matthew 9:37 i read that okay jesus said that the harvest was plentiful but the laborers are few because people had no discernment of the times and season which people which people the people in the synagogue who used to worship God and who used to open the scroll of the prophets, the Bible, and the, they are teaching from the Bible, but they don't even know what is the season and time that the Lord has brought in Israel. You read the Bible, you pray as much as you can, but if you don't have the eyes of the prophetic, if you are not hearing uh, and discerning the time and season which you are living in, you will you are you are you will not be able to fulfill god's purpose okay because the synagogue of those times did not had and also did not had and also rejected the prophetic anointing they the synagogue rejected the prophetic anointing the synagogue had no prophetic direction the synagogue had no discernment of times and season and today prophetically speaking today's church is rejecting the prophetic anointing today's church has driven out prophets from the church they have de driven out those who, uh, the sons of isakar who can bring the direction and the understanding of what the church needs ought to do in this time and season hallelujah let's go to some verses are you with me amen matthews chapter 16 let's go to matthews chapter 16 let's read from verse 1 
<coughs> then the Pharisees and Sadducees came and testing him asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's what, what, what is the chapter number? Matthew 16. And till now Jesus has already shown so many signs, so many wonders, so much of revelation, so much of teaching, so much of revealing. But yet the church leaders come and tell Jesus, show us a sign. Hallelujah. Show us a sign. How much signs will God give you? How much will God tell you to do this, do this? How much will God talk to you? Why they are telling that I will tell you? There is a revelation behind that. Je Jesus has done till now numerous signs. He has shown wonders, authoritative teaching, powerful teaching, powerful release of revelations. And still these leaders of the synagogue come to Jesus and ask Jesus, show us a sign. Not because they wanted a sign to believe, but why? They wanted to test Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus knowing their intention, I told you, Jesus is the greatest prophet. When a person comes, if you go to Jesus and ask a question to Jesus, he will not look at the words that you have framed up. He will look at the intention in your heart that you have and answer as per that. Okay. Hallelujah. So Jesus knowing their intention, what he said, he answered, you see, you when the devil asks you to prove, when some people ask you to prove your anointing, you don't ha always have to answer them and fulfill their expectations. Amen. When Jesus was on the cross, what did people say? Oh, he saved others. Why can't he save himself? He raised up the dead. Why can he save himself from the death? death? Bring yourself from the cross if you are the son of God. Come on, do it. But what did Jesus do? He did not try to prove himself to them. When the devil blabbers in front of you through the mouths of people, bam, 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 do this, do this, show that, show this. Sometimes you have to learn to keep quiet and show nothing to the devil. And in doing that, you will actually defeat the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Discernment, discernment, discernment. The time we are living in, servants of God need to have discernment. Hallelujah. Okay. So Jesus knew what they are doing and verse 2 says he answered and said to them when it is evening you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red and in, in the morning it will be fall weather today for the sky is red and threatening hypocrites you know how to discern the face of the sky but you cannot discern the signs of the times a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. He rejected to give a sign because he is saying, you hypocrites, when the sky is red, when the sky is monstrous, you know that uh, heavy rain will come, storms will come. Why can't you discern the spiritual times and seasons that God is bringing when you, when you, when you can discern everything? Christians, when you can discern the stock, stock market, that Tata, Tata stock will rise up and Mahindra stock will go down. Why can't, you discern the, why can't you discern the season that you are into and work as per that and do what God has called you to in that season? Hallelujah. Okay. He said, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. Hallelujah. Believers, we are not called to seek after a sign. We are called to discern the times and the seasons. We are called to be the sons of Issachar in this time, in this generation, to discern the times and the season. Hallelujah. Are we together? Okay. One of, okay, one of the reasons why Pharisees, after seeing so many signs, wonders, Purposely they are coming and seeking for a sign because they were blind. They were spiritually blind people. Everyone says spiritually blind. Hmm? Every, again, say it again with conviction. Spiritually blind. Okay. Let's go to Matthew's chapter 23. I, I don't have time to read that whole uh, text. But 
I will just give you the reference you can write it down and refer to it afterwards when you read Matthew's chapter 23 verse 16 to uh, 26 okay we will not read that we do not have time to read those things but Jesus calls the Pharisees and the scribes as blind around five times in those verses 16 in 10 verses he calls them blind blind you blind people you blind people you blind people why blind people because they are blind to the seasons and the times that God has brought in Israel they are the leaders of the so-called institution of God on earth in Israel but they can't even discern the times and season if you don't have a idea about which time and season you are in if I don't have a idea about which season is today what I have to preach today I will preach theory to you it will puff you up in your mind but it will do nothing to your spirit theology what it does is it will it will it will lighten up the intelligence of your mind but it will not profit your spirit hallelujah it's very important that you have a word from god every day of your life it's very important that every day of your life cry for god and tell god lord expel me from every season tell me what you are doing tell me what you want me to do that should be your cry every day okay it might be okay now okay so you have to you have to cry before god every day and tell him lord tell me what is the season what you are going to do what you want me to do what you want me to contribute to your kingdom show me the times and the seasons hallelujah are you understanding so you can the people are carrying out mega churches but they are outside of what God is doing in the current season. You will not find the words that are uttered in an atmosphere or in a fellowship that are as per alignment of what God is doing in a season. Hallelujah. When it is time for harvesting, we cannot talk about uh, watering because it's time to harvest hallelujah okay let's not go into that um, further but jesus called in the in that in that chapter jesus called the pharisees and the scribes blind who are the scribes the scribes were those who used to write and who used to study the bible the bible they were scholars but they were blind as per jesus not me don't say brother raul is uh, jealous of the scribes no i am not jealous jesus is saying they are they are blind yes hallelujah the prophetic is the eyes of the church and if the church despises and rejects the prophetic it will it will become blind the whole body of christ can become blind and that was the problem with the church of the old testament and you will i, I don't have time but you will you will hear the scripture saying that you guys have persecuted the prophets that i sent you guys your fathers have killed the prophets and their blood is upon you hallelujah i don't have time that that is a why that happened there is another revelation and uh, i can't cover but i will tell you i will bring a glimpse of that revelation uh, i did i tell you that uh, israel was delivered only out of the physical egypt and the physical pharaoh but they were never delivered out of they were never delivered from the gods of egypt and the spirits of egypt and even in the new testament the spirits of egypt and the gods of egypt controlled israel even in the new testament starting from matthew you will ask me where were they how did they control hallelujah when you read the book of ezekiel carefully you will see that while israel was coming out of Egypt Moses was bringing them out of Egypt at that time you know what God had told them to get rid of their idols they were carrying the idols from Egypt but they said no to God no we don't want to keep the idols back we want to carry the idols with us and God wanted to destroy them before taking them out of Egypt Ezekiel reveals that 
in the book of Ezekiel. Go, go home and read Ezekiel. But because for the glory of God's name that Egypt should not mock God. That's why by the mercy of God, God took them out of Egypt. Otherwise, he would have destroyed, uh, destroyed the people of Israel in Egypt because they did not want to get rid of the idols of Egypt. So when Israel came out of Egypt, the idols of Egypt, the spirits of Egypt, were, they were carrying it. They were carrying it. And that's why they instigated, they tempted Aaron to build something that was a golden calf, again an idol of Egypt, because the spirit of Egypt was following them. Then after many years, Jeroboam took over the kingdom of Israel from the, from the, from the, from the generation of David. Okay, is it okay now? After many years, Jeroboam, the king Jeroboam, who took over the kingdom of Israel from the generation of David, he built a golden, golden calf. Why people in Israel at regular intervals are building this golden calf? The gods and the spirits of Egypt are in Israeli people. Still, they have not get, got rid of Egypt. Egypt is following Israel until even now, until the old, uh, New Testament. How? The same snake which used to control the people and keep them under bondage, which was in Pharaoh. Now that sna snake spirit was now operating through the Pharisees. And the Pharisees Go home and read Matthew's chapter, uh, Matthew, Matthew's chapter 20, 23, Matthew's chapter 23. I will, I will, I will tell you some verses from that Matthew's chapter 23. And uh, hear out those verses and tell me if you remember Pharaoh by reading those verses, those qualities of the Pharisees. Okay, I will read some verses from Matthew's chapter 23. Matthew's chapter 23 verse 13. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourself, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Is, no, is that not a quality of Pharaoh? What they are doing? They will not go to God and worship God, and they will also not allow people to know God. What is that? Pharaoh. You see how Egypt is still in Israel? It was not the people of God. It was that old Pharaoh that attacked the new Moses, that is Jesus. Yes. Uh, uh, let me read another verse. Verse 15. Okay, I am reading Matthew 23 verse 15. That is not my topic, but let me give you a glimpse of it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel land and sea to one, win one proselyte. Proselyte means a convert. Okay, when so they were also in evangelism, by the way, the Pharisees and the scribes, they were winning souls. What they, they did to the souls who were won, what they did, and when he is won, you make him twice as much as a son of hell as yourself. My God, see how Jesus is speaking there. You are going out and winning souls, and when you win that proselyte, when you win a soul, you are making that new person twice such as, as much as hell as yourself jesus is calling them as the sons of hell can you see the audacity of the teaching and the preaching of jesus have you read those verses huh? he is talking that because he knows what kind of spirit is inside the ph pharisees and the scribes with all due respect and with my love for the body of christ and for the saints of god i have seen new converts when they go into the church, they become worse than, than they were before as unbelievers. They become so corrupt. They become, they become filled with misery, corruption, ego, pride after they come in the church. Why? Because there are Pharisees sitting in the church who make them like themselves, sons of hell. Blind leaders of blind people. That is what they are. I am telling you prophetically, today, today that Pharaoh and that Egypt spirit is also ruling many churches. It is ruling numerous churches, numerous churches. Hallelujah. And giving birth to such kind of people as themselves. Insecure people, people filled with self, people filled with ego. Eh? 
Hallelujah. People who are blind, they don't know the season, but they will pick up verses from the Bible and put down people, judge people, criticize people here and there, put down Christians. Stay with me. Are we together? Hallelujah. Okay, so are we together that that the the, that the Pharisees and the scribes were blind and the church needs to have the eyes of the prophetic, needs to have the discernment of the times and the season. Let's go to the next chapter and the next verse in 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. And uh, if you are attentive in the spirit, you might know where I am going. I am going to the life of Eli. No? Alleluia. Verse 9. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 9. So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. So we know about Hannah. She did not have a child. Okay. And that's why she was in anguish. She was, she was in bitterness of soul. So she came to the temple. And who was the priest of the temple? Eli was the priest in the tabernacle. He was there. Verse 11. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts. If you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child. See how many times she is referring to herself as a maidservant. Okay. So don't, don't misunderstand Hannah. Hannah is not complaining against the Lord. Hannah is humbling herself down before the Lord because she uses so many times the word maidservant your maid servant your maid servant to refer herself okay and the prayer is a prayer of a humble woman who does not wants to take take anything from god but wants to give to god okay so uh, so so um, don't misunderstand hannah but we will see eli misunderstood hannah because he was blind in discernment we will come to that here he uh, she says that maid servant but will give your maid servant a male child then i will give him to the lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head so she is saying that i am i am not here to take you take anything from you lord but i am i am here to give it to you lord give me a child so that i will give it to your kingdom hallelujah in her pursuit for wanting something for herself okay and when she was not getting it not getting it not getting it the holy spirit led her to a place where the holy spirit told her hannah give something to god okay till now her mindset was oh i am being ridiculed by people i am by i am being persecuted and insulted and mocked by penina and all those things so i am not i i want it i want it but from i want it the holy spirit led her to a place where she is pray, praying here the holy spirit told her give something to god give it to god wow hallelujah and then her prayers were answered where uh, uh, until a believer comes to a place where the flesh is broken where the selfishness is broken and where you say uh, i don't want to take anything from you i want to give you lord i want to give you and there comes the season of answered prayer hallelujah oh my verse 12 and it happened as she continued praying before the lord that eli watched her mouth now comes the hero Eli, the priest of the Lord. Uh, he, he, what he did? Eli was there and Eli was watching her pray. And Eli was watching her mouth, watching her posture, was, wa wa watching her from the outside. Okay? And then, and it happened. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. You see her, she was uttering a secret prayer. She did not want everyone to know. She was praying in the, in the secret place that prayer of hannah is the prayer of the secret place is the prayer of surrender is the prayer of giving it all to god that is a powerful prayer by the way if you if you want to understand the revelation behind it 
and those are the prayers which will which will provoke the attention of god to hear the voice of a man and do accordingly hallelujah every voice does not carries authority with god you have to learn how to how to pray a prayer that will shake god's at shake god's heart and bring his attention on you and that he will answer you so that was a prayer of secret secret place a prayer of surrendering all a prayer that where she was giving up all for, from god a prayer of a selfless heart okay and uh, she was praying with her you know in her heart the bible says her lips were not moving right okay but her voice was not heard therefore eli thought she was drunk now this priest of the lord saw her oh this woman is drunk why this man was spiritually blind okay the priest of the lord in the house of the lord was spiritually blind and stay with me when you are spiritually blind okay when you are spiritually spiritually blind you will approve the wrong people and disapprove the right people in the church you will appoint a priest a pastor who is spiritually blind he will place all the wrong leaders to function in the church and all the right ones he will put the, to the corner and ridicule <laughs> hallelujah that is will that is what will happen a lack of spiritual discernment will what lead to misuse of authority lack of spiritual discernment will lead to misuse of spiritual authority yes hallelujah okay so he assumed that woman to be drunk and uh, he rebuked that woman but the woman had to but but hana was in the secret place so she did not get angry on eli she said no you see your maid servant i am i am in grief of my soul and she says that but hana answered no my lord i am a woman of sorrowful spirit i have drunk neither wine or intoxicating drink but have poured out my soul before the lord so in a humble way she answered the priest of god that is eli okay when you stay connected to the voice of god when you have discernment when you are in the secret place you will not be provoked by spiritually spiritually blind people spiritually blind people what they want to do whenever they see a spirit filled believer flesh will always come to fight against the spirit hallelujah do you remember that uh, hagar and sarai had a fight the mother of the bo the bond woman and the free woman had a fight and what paul says in galatians that hagar uh, represented the uh, 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 what do you call ishmael represented the son of the bond woman the son of the flesh and isaac represented the son of the spirit okay hallelujah and there will always be a fight between those people okay hallelujah we we talk about peace in the church i am telling you peace will never come in the church because there are the sons of the flesh and there are the sons of the spirit and there will always be a conflict huh in the kingdom of god i am talking um, many people cannot comprehend or misunderstand but i am talking truth i am talking deep things those who know it they know it okay hallelujah are you understanding so listen to me so eli was spiritually blind first of all she could not discern this this woman who was a woman of the secret place hallelujah a blind leader cannot recognize you if you are a spirit filled woman and you go and approach a blind leader that blind leader will misunderstand you and put you in a place where you should should not be should not be placed in he will not be able to discern what kind of heart you carry okay uh people pastors who do not have a discernment okay what they will do is they when they will look at spirit filled believers they will they will have a different opinion about them okay let me not go too much in that but let me go to first samuel chapter 2 verse 11 first samuel chapter 2 verse 11 let let's jump on to that then elkana 
okay okay first samuel chapter 2 verse 12 let's read verse 12 now the sons of eli were corrupt they did not know the lord underline that they were corrupt and they did not know the lord eli who is he the priest of god's temple the authority the man god has placed on a position okay knowing that his sons what they are corrupt okay but they don't even know the lord yet he placed people who don't know the lord on positions of priest hallelujah a spiritually blind people a, a spiritually blind leader will honor the wrong people more than the more than god and more than god's faithful people a spiritually blind person will honor the wrong people who don't know god more than god himself and more than god's faithful people first samuel chapter 2 verse 29 first samuel chapter 2 verse 29 why do you kick this is god speaking to eli through a prophet now okay why do you kick at my sacrifice and my offering which i have commanded in my dwelling place and honor your sons more than me god is telling you have honored your sons more than me eli when you know those sons of your though they are from your flesh and blood your family members okay your own son but when you know they don't know me they don't honor me they don't know head or tail about me they are corrupt in their ways why did you place them on the position of priesthood why eli why hallelujah a true man of god has the guts to remove the wrong people and place the right people at the position that was prophet samuel you will ask me the question you will ask me the question that you know prophet samuel great as he was in judging israel discerning israel but yet there was a weakness and a negative point in him he knew that his sons were also corrupt but he placed them as judges over israel you will say but why did god bring judgment you know god brought judgment on eli's family line and he god told him that there will no one will be there in your generation who will see old age they will be killed he there was a curse released okay there you will ask why samuel did not because samuel in the kingdom of god eli was completely corrupt and blind samuel was partly corrupt in the family matters but in the matter of the kingdom of god he was he was not blind yes hallelujah amen in the new testament in the new testament we cannot be like samuel we have to be we have to be completely filled with discernment in the church matters and also in the family matters we can no sh show no partiality if i have a son and i know that he is not walking with god i will see another person who is faithful to god and appoint him and not my son hallelujah I have seen people leading worship on the stage who are not even water baptized. Why? Why? Because they belong, they are related to the pastor. Corruption and the politics in the church cannot be ignored. May God give people the grace to not to falter and not to become dry be looking at corruption, corruption in the church. What Samuel and Eli was doing, it is called politics in the kingdom of God. Placing the favorite ones. That is politics. Have you seen politicians? Hallelujah. My God, some of you don't know what I am speaking about. Okay, listen to me. Hallelujah. So, here is what happens by leaders who are spiritually blind. They appoint by flesh okay i don't have time to compare eli and samuel so so what what god is saying you have honored your sons more than me eli you have honored your sons never honor even your father your mother your 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 son your daughter your husband your wife whoever they are if there is a position vacant and god wants to appoint someone sit with god god whom have you chosen tell me don't do that 
the people who do ministry they they see what i do in the church they will see me never doing partiality i never do it you will never see me promoting my own family members i never do that i know what is their calling i keep them in their calling hallelujah are we understanding people of god most of the people have this misconception about elijah and elisha oh elisha got the double portion he followed elijah he followed elijah no 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 when you read the book of first kings and i think chapter 18 uh, sorry chapter 19 there actually god pointed out elisha to elijah and god told elijah anoint three people that is haziel king of syria and second is jehu king of israel and third is elisha as a prophet in your place so it 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 is god who appoints people not man as anointed we are we cannot choose people you know what happened to samuel samuel had this you see the weakness of samuel manifested in the house of jesse okay when samuel went into the house of jesse he he saw eliab handsome good looking mighty and god Oh my god i don't know what's wrong with this mic okay so <laughs> so that weakness of samuel you know when he went into the house of jesse he saw eliab mighty and young and handsome and samuel ran to anoint him let me anoint him and god to stop man stop stop that you don't know samuel you have to develop your prophetic anointing to know the person i have chosen you look at the outward but i look at the heart and i have chosen that person he is not here that person is not there yet hallelujah otherwise samuel would have done that mistake i i if, if i would have done if i would have been there with samuel i would have prayed for samuel that uh, the same way he heard god for anointing david he would have heard uh, when he was anointing his children god should have you know he would he should have heard god and stopped before he anointed his sons for to be judges over israel <laughs> hallelujah are we understanding there are many things that we when 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 we appoint people when we do church activities we do out of emotions and favoritism never do that hear god and do things it's god's kingdom it's god's ministry not your ministry he will appoint people whom he has to appoint hallelujah are we are we together okay let's go ahead first samuel chapter 3 first samuel chapter 3 now the boy samuel ministered to the lord before eli it's very important now what i am speaking attend be very attentive now the boy samuel first samuel chapter 3 verse 1 Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. So, what what does that means? Samuel was functioning under the leadership of Eli. He was under the covering of Eli, under the leadership of Eli. Okay, stay with me. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. There is a reason why there was no widespread revelation. there was no widespread revelation in those days because the leaders in the house of god who are supposed to open the eyes of people to god's mysteries were themselves blind that that's why there was no revelation in 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 the time of samuel and eli when samuel was small when in the time of eli because eli who is supposed to by his ministry of priesthood open the eyes of people to god's mysteries and god's times and season he himself was blind how can he open and lead people to god's revelation and mysteries may god raise up servants may god raise up prophets may god raise up apostles who will open the eyes of people to god's times and seasons to god's mysteries in jesus mighty name yes we have to pray that prayer beloved hallelujah okay let's go ahead verse number 2 and it came to pass at that time when while eli was lying down in his place and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see the spiritual manifestation of blindness now started to get manifested physically in eli's eyes and he was not able to see 
and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was and while Samuel was lying down that the Lord called Samuel and he answered here I am so he ran to Eli and said here I am for you called me hallelujah are you listening now stay with me and he he said I did not call lie down again and he went and lay down then the Lord called yet again Samuel so Samuel so arose and went to Eli and said here I am for you call me he answered I did not call my son lie down again what is happening here what is happening here now Samuel was so used to the voice of his pastor who was his pastor who was Samuel's pastor Huh? Come on, answer. Eli. Jaya is, I can see. Yeah, Neetu is answering Eli. Samuel's pastor was Eli. So now Samuel had become so used to the mentorship of the pastor Eli that uh, even when God is speaking to Samuel, he is thinking that my leader is speaking to me. My pastor is speaking to me. And he is going to his pastor. Are we understanding? I want to release a prophetic word even as I am teaching this. God wants to detach you from the voice of a man with which you are familiar. And he wants to at attach you to his own voice in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Don't be so familiar with the voice of a man I am telling you. Hear God. Samuel, it's time for you not to hear Eli. That is not the voice of Eli. You are so used to the voice of Eli that you assume that Eli is speaking. It's not Eli. It is God who is speaking to you now. The seasons change. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, I see and I declare a shift in the leadership of the Church of India in Jesus' mighty name. There is a shift coming. There is a shift coming. There is a shift coming right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So, there will come a time, brothers and sisters, there is nothing called as mentorship in the Bible. I am telling you, there is nothing. Mentorship is what happens in the worldly kingdom. Mentorship is what happens in business. Here, I don't mentor people. I lead people to Christ so that they get attached to Christ. They get one with God. I am not mentoring you. I am not your mentor. I am not your father. Hallelujah. I am a man of God who brings the voice of God. And if you listen to me, you will love God more. That is the difference between a man, a preacher, who has a mega church, who has a lot of things. And if you hear him, you will get attached to that preacher. But if you hear a godly man of God who lives for Jesus, after hearing that man, you will run after Jesus. You will run after God. Hallelujah. So, I, are we understanding? Hallelujah. It will take time, Samuel, but soon you will get used to know that it is God's voice and it is not your pastor who will lead you. It is not your leader who will lead you. It is the Holy Spirit. It is the Lord who will lead you. Hallelujah. Come on, people. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, so, uh, listen to me carefully. Believers, people of God, this idea and this so-called mentorship program where all your life and all your ministry it is only a pastor who dictates over your life and mentors you it's wrong it's wrong no pastor no prophet i am making a statement here no pastor no prophet no apostle can teach you the unique calling and anointing you have only the holy spirit has that treasure box it, he will unveil and open it to you. He will not bring it through someone else. If he bring, his, bring that treasure to you through someone else, he will, he will take the place of the Holy Spirit and the Lord will not let his glory to, to another. He will in many areas of your calling, of your ministry, I can only help you and advise you and whatever help you in the limits I can as a servant of God. But I can never take place the Holy Spirit has in your life. I can never take place uh, uh, I can never take the place of Jesus in your life or in any believer's life but what is happening is 
in the times of the end jesus said many will come and say i am christ what does it mean they will not say that i am jesus they will take the place of jesus in the lives of people yes servants of god will take the place of jesus hallelujah many young ministers who have a fire for god to serve god they are on fire but they don't have the knowledge and the maturity they are being deceived by going in the bondages of men hallelujah i know it but let god set those people free in the name of jesus let the samuels be set free in the name of jesus christ hallelujah you know india and the nations needs prophets and apostles who hear god and who walk in the ways of god and not in the ways of man hallelujah amen it's okay if some people you know pe people tell me why do you so preach against the fatherhood okay if you if, if even if you are into fatherhood why why are you so dependent on the man more than god that is idol worship hallelujah never call anyone father that's a different revelation that is again a different revelation i don't want to get into that but but if you don't discern okay next point is if you don't discern if you don't have discernment if you are blind in discerning slowly you will also lose your hearing abilities hearing god you will lose it slowly slowly if your eyes are not discerning if you don't have discernment slowly slowly eli lost the hearing abilities hallelujah god did not come in the house of god to speak to eli the senior and experienced one he came to speak to samuel a young boy and god is is doing that in jesus name god is doing that in jesus mighty name hallelujah are we together spiritual discernment spiritual discernment hallelujah if god has called you you have to be spiritually discerning i want to take you to a verse that the holy spirit is putting in my spirit right now let's go to first corinthians first corinthians chapter number <sighs> hallelujah i think chapter number 3 no chapter number 2 first corinthians chapter number 2 and let me read verse 14 but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned but he who is spiritually he who is spiritually judges all things yet he himself is rightly judged by no one that is powerful if you have the eyes of the spirit if you have the eyes of the prophetic in every situation in your family in your ministry in your business to spiritually judge okay to spiritually to to do things through the perspective of jesus not on your own perspective through the perspective of jesus if you are are that man no one can pass a judgment on you that is the power hallelujah no one can pass a judgment on you even in in family matters you have to be spiritually discerned <clears throat> you know when i preach this sermons my whole family sits and listens to me why because they know me what i preach is what i am at home with them that's why they listen to me they know the revelations i preach i have acquired with through much pain they have seen me so that's why they listen to me there is peace there is unity hallelujah that is how god wants to make your life god wants to make you a spiritually discerning man or a woman hallelujah and most of the troubles will vanish away at that moment of time that you are having in your family my god hallelujah in jesus mighty name sons of isaka who had understanding of times and seasons our time is getting out i want to i want to cover few points at the end okay i want to cover few points at the end which is very important which very important about your personal life business family or whatever so point number 1 is many delays in your life are not because of ancestral curses or the devil 
but because you are spending your time and energy on something you are not called you have not discerned you don't know what you want to do god it's summer season god wants to do for, god wants you to do mango business but you are doing something else you are not discerning you are not hearing god discerning and doing things as per the season and you will say brother pray for me i think there is some ancestral curses i think there is some hole there is the devil there is delay things are not happening i am working things are not getting fruitful no many times it's not ancestral curses it's not the devil it's because you are not discerning you are not working on god given assignment that's why it's not flourishing are we together even in the time of drought and dryness Isaac heard God and he sowed and he reaped a hundredfold when others were suffering why he knew the season though it looked like everything is dry but it is time for God's season to sow oh that is a spiritual that is spiritual discernment can you do that do you have the audacity i am telling you if if you are spiritual dis, discerning when you have to act on your spiritual discernment you have to go in the odds you have to go against everyone what everyone is doing you will flow against the flow of the world hallelujah all the people of your church and family oh let's go there someone is distributing money 5000 rupees and you are sitting here because you have spiritually discerned that that man is not going to give 5000 rupees but that man who is sitting there is going to convince those people who go there to buy a insurance policy that will give them a cover of 5000 rupees hallelujah <laughs> you will save your time you will save your energy if you don't go there and you if you have spiritual discernment <laughs> hallelujah yes we ourselves cause delays in our life because we jump into plans we jump into decisions we jump into things that people have told us i have told you the story of naomi in the book of ruth she jumped into moab because someone told that god is in moab god is not in moab he is in bethlehem there why did you come in moab and death and destruction losses delays in our life why no discernment hallelujah are we understanding point number 2 you don't reap a harvest plentiful and abundance because you don't sow in the right place as per the seasons and as per discernment <laughs> christians come to me brother my my money has gone because i invested in that property and now i came to know this papers are missing the builder builder is not giving the builder is not giving refund and this and that why no spiritual discernment you sowed in a wrong place you sowed your money in the wrong place some person disappeared from my ministry and from my meeting 2 years after 2 years he called me i want to talk to you brother urgently i told no i want to talk to you urgently what happened brother i went there in that church they guaranteed my breakthrough and took 2 lakh rupees from me but i did not get it you sowed without discernment you jumped into something a scam many of the church and pastors scam people they will take money but they will they they will promise you you went there for a for a tandoori full chicken tandoori full with eight pieces you wanted you went there for that okay and what what the pastor gave you is a small 5 rupee lollipop and you, the pastor told you <laughs> he gave you a 5 rupee lollipop and took 5 lakhs from you and the pastor told you now you see you have got a small part but you have when you will give more to me you will get the original thing that you want and then you, they get you into a chain of bondage where they will take your money from you take the money from you oh my god christians you have to see and discern when you sow in ministries i am not a person who asks for money but sow in right ministries for god's sake you are christians left right and center are giving their money to the to the devil because they are not discerning and yes you will be in financial bondage why because you sow without discernment hallelujah okay point number 3 sometimes things will fight you your job will fight you your shoes will fight you your watch will fight you your mobile phone will fight you 
why because you don't live a lifestyle as per the season stay with me you might you might not understand let me explain it to you believers you have to live a lifestyle as per your season a lifestyle as per your season stay with me you had a samsung galaxy android phone of 18000 rupees let's say huh? you had a samsung galaxy android phone 18000 rupees now it's 3 years you are using it and now after 3 years its battery is gone it's not working properly you decide to take a new phone in that 3 3 years god has now blessed you and prospered you in the 3 years you have progressed financially and you decide to take a phone what you have samsung galaxy what is the cost 18000 rupees now when you go to take the phone the next new phone you say oh no let me not take the same phone let me not even take a expensive phone let me go for a lava 8000 rupees ha huh? stay with me i will go for a lava phone now 8000 why no no i should save money i think but you are already you have already progressed in 3 years i should save money you buy that lava phone and every day every day that lava phone after you bought it you have to go to the service centers every month that phone is giving you trouble now yeah the phone can fight you i am telling you it's spiritual why because when god wanted to you to take a iphone now after samsung you are going back to lava you are not living a lifestyle in which god has called you believers are not understanding you have to live a lifestyle you are you used to i know when you began you used to go to the fashion street in cst and buy shoes of 200 rupees but now you got to go to the showroom to buy branded shoes because if you again go to the fashion street now also to buy those 300 sh rupee shoes those shoes will start fighting you <laughs> hallelujah are we understanding yes god's plan is to increase you not to decrease you but you a miser person i want to save that money why to spend what a uh, god wa why is god giving you money like the rich fool to save and think that till my end i will enjoy i don't have to work no to use hallelujah so that your lifestyle improves you are the children of god hallelujah that is one extreme another extreme is when a believer just began okay and he is in a in a season where he has to he has to not to spend much money there are seasons i am telling you it all even the spending of money is as, as per season you cannot look at me and spend like i spend or i cannot look at you and spend like you spend are we understanding people there is the other extreme where believers come into the kingdom of god looking at a mighty prophet who travels in jet planes who wears the gucci jacket and who wears the 2 lakh rupee nike shoes and who has the uh, who has the most expensive iphone in his hand and he looks at that prophet just became a believer and he says i want to have what the things he has the lifestyle he has and he starts to spend money you are jumping seasons there there is other, another extreme no wait don't buy those things now this is not the time for you to buy are we understanding now things will fight you because you don't live a lifestyle as per your season even in your season live a lifestyle as per your season my god hallelujah okay what was that point number 3 no point number 4 point number 3 point number 4 is you don't honor and connect with people with the right people in your season you don't honor people you don't connect with the right people god has given in this in your current season hallelujah again like eli hallelujah when when you you when you become a lion in the spirit you cannot associate with the old dogs and cats no you cannot and you cannot sit among the dogs and cats being a lion and say oh i don't want to associate with those lions they roar so loudly that it it hurts my ears you cannot sit and gossip between the old ones 
about the new people that God has given in your new season. <laughs> Jaya is understanding everything. Hallelujah. And Avni is also understanding. I, I know Frankie is also understanding. Hallelujah. So, people what they do is they don't, they don't know to honor the right people in their season. They don't know to connect with the right people in their season. They will sit and gossip with the old ones. And they will also, yeah, yeah, I am with you. The cats and dogs will tell you, I am with you. And then secretly they will go and tell the lion, you know what he was telling about you? Those people will fight you. Why? Because your fault. You are not honoring and connecting with the people in your season. Hallelujah. Our time is up, but we will pray. We give you the glory, Lord. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray this word I have brought to your people. It's your word. It's your voice. Yes. Let it transform, revive the lives of your people. Build them in maturity. Build them in understanding your word, your voice more accurately. More with depth, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That they will recognize, they will know you and work as per in their seasons in the mighty name of jesus christ hallelujah we cover all the families here uh, lord the people joined here their families even those who were not able to make it all of them we cover them with the blood of jesus christ whatever hindrances the devil brings in lord i we break it in the mighty name of jesus christ hallelujah lord revive your people revive your church lord i pray that this fellowship Lord, have mercy that they, we will never lose out on the eyes of the prophetic. We will never lose out, Lord. Hallelujah. That we will never reject, we will never despise, Lord, the prophetic anointing, Lord. Hallelujah. The ministry of the sons of Issachar, who had the understanding of the times, Lord, and who told and commanded Israel what they ought to do, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, raise, raise up leaders, raise up prophets, apostles, Lord. Oh, Lord, who will be spiritually discerning, Lord, who will do your work, who will appoint people who are God-fearing and faithful, Lord. As the early church in the book of Acts, when there was a complaint against the Jews about the food distribution, the apostles came together and they said, let us appoint men who are faithful, who are spirit-filled, who are of good reputation for this matter. Oh Lord, let and let us give ourselves to continual prayer and the ministry of the word. Raise up such apostles and prophets, Lord, who will not leave their assignment and jump and poke their nose into every business, Lord, but who will delegate responsibilities to the right people in the church, Lord. Hallelujah. Let there be order in your church in Jesus' mighty name. Revive your church, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that you will revive the body of Christ in India. We pray that you will bring a shift in the body of Christ in India. As per your will, as per your word, as per what you are speaking to us. In Jesus' mighty name, we cover all of us with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray and we all will say, Amen.